All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a text box around some text in KOWP and have that text box change its width dynamically so that the text is always inside of it. And as you can see here, the seconds, um, the width of this box is constantly changing. Of course, that may not be eye appealing to you, but I did want to create this seconds one here, or the seconds here, so you can quickly see that this box will constantly change. And it really just involves using number global variables to do a little bit of tweaking and basing the width of your box, you have to involve the number of characters in your text item. And we have to do a little mathematical formula. It's not really that bad. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that in KOWP right now. So let me go ahead and get rid of this stuff and let's go ahead and have a look. Now to create this, what you're gonna to have to do, some of these globals I'm gonna show you are just for me to teach you the stuff. But for, what, um, for this piece here, it works best. The text box works best with monospace type fonts. Monospace type fonts have equal spacing between each character. For example, the letter I is going to have the exact same space, like a lowercase i is going to have the exact same space as a lowercase m. I know you probably can't see this very clear right now, but that I in edit up here, you may notice there's a little bit more of a space between there because the spacing of the I is the same thing as the spacing of an M. It's the same thing as the spacing of a capital letter. It's the same thing as the spacing of a period. There's always that equal width. That Those are monospace type fonts. You can do it with other type of fonts, but it may get, it might not be as, it might not uh, always come out as you expect it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that out there right now. For example, if you look at this word position, clearly that I does not have as much horizontal spacing as, say, the O does. The O takes up more horizontal space than the I does. That is not a monospace font, whereas all these fonts I have here are mono. And you can also oftentimes see it in the name, cutive mono. Uh, you know, we got mono here. We got mono here. That's what it works best with. But again, you can do it with other fonts. Now, what you want to do, you want to create four globals uh, for the text box that you're creating. Um, create a font global, create an adjust height, ADJ height, and I have this going from zero up to 100. You can put whatever you want to put on it. Basically, that right there is just going to serve as you to quickly correct the height of your box should you wish to change your font size. You know, if your font was too small and you want to go quickly adjust it, that's what this global's for. Now, the M-U-L-T, that just stands for multiply. That's the way I remind myself there. And then we have adjust width. These two are going to work together. The multiply is going to quickly adjust the width of our box. And then once you get it about where you want with a monospace font like that right there, then we can come in here and we can adjust this guy. And let me bump this up to about 24. I don't know if you noticed, but the edge of my box are at the ends of both of these pieces, all these pieces of text that we have here. And this adjust width is going to allow me to fine tune it. Um, the multiplier would increase it too much, to be quite honest with you. So that's why I have two of those globals there. So four globals in all, a font, a height, and two of these pieces that work together. Now, let me show you a few things. Those are the four globals that you need. You may notice I have more globals in here, but I have different types of fonts. I have different boxes around different things. And you also may have noticed a list global. You don't need this, but this is just here for me to teach you or show you how this stuff does change dynamically. So notice this list global has you know, five pieces to it. A short statement, a longer statement, an even longer statement, then we have December and we have May. Because maybe some of you want to put boxes around your month and you want that box to change its width. So that's a prime example. December is a long month, May is a short month. And as you can see, that's exactly what I have going on here. I have a box going around December, I have a box going around May. And in all honesty, the way the box is coded is the same way, believe it or not. It's operating based on the number of characters in that particular text piece. All right, so let me change these. Notice it says a short statement, a longer statement, an even longer statement, December and May. I'm just going to edit this list global variable and I'm going to create some brand new pieces. Well, trying to at least. I'm gonna use my finger real quick. All right, so I'm gonna create five new pieces. I'm gonna call this one uh, A. I'm going to call this one A, B, C, D, um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I'm just making, making them gradually longer. Okay, that's what, one, two, three. I'm just going to type some junk. And as long as I didn't type in a comma, I should be okay there. And then my last one, um, let's do, I don't know, whatever, uh, K, L, W, P. Why not? 
because I had I think I had five pieces a while ago. So let me press OK on that. And what you'll notice is that it did change the boxes. Check that out. Now this one's ridiculous because I, I don't have it set to, to go to a new line. We can definitely do that as well if we wanted to. But if I save this and go back to the home screen, what you'll notice is that these boxes change. Because up here where it said a short statement, a longer statement, an even longer statement, those boxes were different. But notice the boxes staying the same. Well, how in the heck do we do this? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to come up to, let's just go to this thing, edit this manually. Why not? Let me show you this one. All right, so I'm up here in this overlap group. Let me zoom in on that so you can see it a little bit better. And the, the border that I have is just a rectangle. You can probably do this with just about any shape, to be quite honest with you. And notice I have some codes here. Um, for the width, now, first of all, before I do that, I do have the paint set to stroke. You can adjust your stroke, obviously. Um, I have it set at like five. You can apply a number global to that as well if you'd like. For the width of this rectangle, that's what we want to change, and we want it to change based on the length of the text item that we have inside that box. Now, this one, it you may notice that sentence said, edit this manually with a period. So what I want to do is I want to, this right here, this code, um, let me see here. Let me take away this part. And I, I can remember how to type this stuff back in. At least I hope I can. All right. The number of characters, including spaces in this thing, is 19. 1, 2, 3, 4. That counts as a space. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and the period makes 19. So what I want to do, that multiply global variable. So I'm going to do GV multiply, and I'm going to multiply that by the length. And then what I want to do is after I multiply that, I want to add on a little bit just to fine tune it. So I'm going to do plus, I want to add that on GV, and I think it was adjust width. Okay. And that's the code that you need. Um, you can apply this same code to whatever you want to do. Now the height is just going to be GV adjust height. Of course, you could apply that um, this way as well. You don't have to do a, a calculator for that one. You can just tap on that, go to your global, and I can go to adjust height, that one right there. Okay, and that's the code that you need. This works, um, again, really good for monospace fonts. Now to show you something a little bit more interesting is going to be like the seconds. So let me come down here to the seconds because you can quickly see that this thing is constantly changing. And basically you don't want, what you don't want to do, if I go back to this manual one real quick, um, I have the box and then I have this text item inside of here and that text item says edit this manually. So that's an example of you editing this manually, but you have to go in and change the code in your rectangle as well. You know what I'm saying? Because notice I did have the words edit this manually inside of the code for the width, depending on the length of that piece. Well, obviously more than likely we're going to be putting some things in here that are dynamically changing. So that's where I want to tie in the seconds to this. So I'm going to come down here to seconds words. That's this one right here. Again, it's the same setup, a rectangle um, with some stroke around it and whatever. And basically, let me come back and show you this code first, seconds to words. Let me actually go to the text that's inside of there. And basically, it's the number of seconds. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm doing the text converter numbers to words, and I'm taking the number of seconds with a padding of zero, DFSS. That's like 01, 02, 03, 04 for seconds, all the way up to 59 and including OO as well, um, but that would show as a zero. And if you do the text converter code, numbers to words, it takes these numbers and converts them to words. So this right here is how I'm getting the actual word to pop up, all right? Now if I go back into my rectangle, I go to its width. Now I did create a different global variable. I call this one S multiply for seconds multiply. But notice I'm trying to get the length of whatever this numbers to words DFSS is. So whatever text you have actually showing, if it's a code, if it's just something you made manually, you want to put that part in this text converter finding the length of whatever this thing is. This will change dynamically, obviously, because when it's zero seconds, it'll be Z-E-R-O. That'll be four. Whereas if you have 41, you know, F-O-R-T-Y, a space, then an O-N-E, you know, that's nine characters. So it's going to find the length of this numbers to words. When we convert the number of seconds to words, it's going to find that length. We're going to multiply it by our GV second multiplier. That's what that stands for. And then again, we want to add on the adjust width. 
So these are the two pieces that I was talking about that get tied together. We multiply by one, then we add the other piece to get a little bit of uh, fine tuning there, if you will. You can leave off the addition piece, but I recommend adding it on. It's just one little extra global, one little extra piece in your code to add on. And then the height here, I just have it set to seconds adjust height. That way, because this one, clearly this font here is a lot bigger than the one I had up earlier. And also the font's different too. So if you have different text boxes with different fonts and different sizes, you want to do different globals for each one. I hope that makes sense. Clearly the size is going to make a big difference and the font too. So let me back out of this and let me come in here and show you if I go back to my globals. Um, if, let me play around with seconds just for a little bit. So S font, that is this one right here, the Nova Mono Regular. If I come in here and select a different font, for example, let's pick, let me do another mono, then I'll show you what happens when mono, um, when we don't have a mono. Um, I don't have many of them in here. Let's do, okay. Now that says monotone regular, but that's not actually a, I don't think that's a mono space font. It may be, no, it's not, because that I is not equally spaced. Uh, this one is mono, that looks like it's going to be a, a mono space type font. I believe it is going to be. Now, why did it not change my seconds? Oh, you know what? Let me come back in here. I bet you I never applied that to the actual words. So I'm going to go back to my seconds. And yeah, I never applied it there. So let me do S font. Now we're going to see it. Now you might say, uh-oh, the box is not around the words. Well, that's why we created these global variables. That's exactly why we did this. I can go in here and adjust my second stuff. So S multiply. What I do is I take the thing that I'm adding on. I take this back down to zero. And I get my multiplier up to where I'm just about on the edge of whatever my stuff is. And you may notice this too. This thing does center perfectly around these words. So if I keep on bumping this up and give it a second, see how that's not quite there yet? And it's right about, I guess, somewhere in here. You can leave it just like that. You don't have to add on any extra if you don't want to. But I recommend doing that to give you a little bit more space because sometimes multiplier can give you too much space. And you won't know that unless you mess around with this a lot. But trust me, it's good to have one piece to multiply by and one piece to add to adjust um, fine tuning. And then I can adjust, come here and adjust the height if I'd like to as well. Well, I'm trying to at least. Let me, let me use my finger. There's the height of that box. And if I come in here and fine tune this a little bit more, maybe bump this out, something like that. Now we have a box that by us just doing a couple of adjustments on our global, if I save this and go back to the home screen, as you can see, this box is going to constantly change its width. Now, probably you don't want to apply this to seconds, but that was the best way for me to get this idea across to you in this video. And um, let me go back into KLWP. What was something else I wanted to show to you? Oh, yeah. What if we pick something that is not a monotype font? So let me pick something up here that's not monotype. It's not bad. It's just it works better with monospace fonts. All right. As you can see here, like that I and toxic, it doesn't take up a lot of horizontal space, whereas something like the G and grumpy takes up a lot more space because this is not a mono space font. So let me tap on that one. And it's not bad. As you can see, it's still staying inside of the box. I'm going to knock this adjust width down. Let me take, oh, that's not the same one. That was this one down here. Let me come down here to my seconds. Seconds, let me adjust its width down to zero. And I can take this multiplier and I'm going to move it to where it's still not bad. But you may notice a few pieces here and there. Sometimes the spacing here might not be the same. I don't know if you could, like, look like, did you see how close that Y was to it? Look how close that O, look how close that R is. But sometimes you see a bigger gap over here. Monospace fonts will not always, let me save this and go back to the home screen. You can see it a lot better. The space from here and over here might not always be the same. Sometimes you might notice a bigger gap and sometimes you might notice where it's right there. Boom, boom, boom. See that? That's what I'm talking about. So that's where you have to come in here. If you don't want to use a mono space font, you need to come in here and take that seconds adjust width and go ahead and bump it on up a little bit. And I mean, okay, I'm bumping it up. I'm adding 20 additional uh, sp spaces, I guess, to the width of that rectangle. If I save this and go back to the home screen, let's see if we keep all of our stuff inside of it. 
I mean, see how it's still kind of close sometimes? Again, that's going to happen with uh, non-mono space fonts. But nonetheless, if you fine-tune those two pieces, the multiplier and the uh, adjustment, the adjust width of whatever you're doing, you should be just fine. And you can apply this to multiple pieces. Just make sure you create globals for each one. And there you have it. That's how you can create a dynamically changing text box or text border around a text item in your custom live wallpaper. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.